I think he is um, more relevant today than in his own time. See, there are some personalities in history uh, whose uh, relevance never ends and who always remain contemporary. The great prophets of all religions, the great philosophers of different countries and uh, Mahatma Gandhi is one such uh, visionary who will always remain uh, relevant, contemporary today and tomorrow. And uh, what I have tried to argue in my book is that he is relevant, especially in the internet age. You see, uh, the title of this book, Music of the Spinning Wheel, Mahatma Gandhi's Manifesto for the Internet Age. On the one hand, this book uh, seeks to dispel the widespread misconception that uh, Gandhiji was opposed to science, technology, modernity, industrialization. And uh, the more I read his views on these subjects, the more I became convinced that uh, he was deeply scientific in his approach to all issues in life. After all, he was a seeker after truth. You know, his autobiography is titled My Experiments with Truth. So, his experiments with truth were two-sided because he looked at truth, one from the point of view of scientific truth and the other is spiritual truth. Because truth is not just what scientists seek and discover. You know, for thousands of years, men of learning, men of meditation, men of contemplation, they have tried to find truth through self-realization. The meaning of life, the meaning of this universe, how it was created, what is the purpose of man in this universe, these are most profound questions which, uh, you know, which uh, human mind has been exploring ever since the birth of man, man himself. So, Mahatma Gandhi was a very unique seeker after truth who on the one hand was very saintly in his attitude. I mean, he was, he was, you know, he was really seeking the most fundamental answers to questions of life and existence. And at the same time, he was leading a, a major national liberation struggle against the mightiest empire at the time. So he was a political leader too, but his goal was not just India's political freedom. After India attained political freedom, he wanted to see an all-round transformation of India, of, of India, Indian society, so that our future development is in harmony with our spiritual foundations. So my book music of the spinning wheel, it actually tries to see what were those spiritual foundations which his spinning wheel and the khadi symbolized and how he was trying to spread this awareness to millions of people. See, philosophers often speak only to intellectuals, but here was a man of action who was speaking to millions of people and who was mobilizing them, inspiring them, uniting them and spreading a very unique message in modern history. And in this, he also saw the place of science and technology as, as a, a, a mighty force that can, that can improve the lives of people, that can spread learning, that can, that can address the issues in healthcare that can create greater efficiency in production, that can increase productivity so that all the people 
in India and extending to the whole world, all the people in the world can live materially happy lives. Now, this is one part of my book. But your question, how is he relevant today? Because after all, we are living in a very different world. It's a, it's a world that is driven by technology, information technology. So, is he relevant in the age of information technology? So, here I found uh, that uh, the internet has a revolutionary potential to realize his basic philosophical and ethical concepts. And therefore, I have called the internet metaphorically an avatar, a reincarnation of the spinning wheel. Because through the spinning wheel, he was giving a message of creating a world that is united, that is cooperative, that, that promotes peace and brotherhood. And this is what the internet is doing today. The internet has transformed the world into a global family. We are becoming more and more interconnected, more and more interdependent in ways that are un unprecedented. So, I think that this is really promoting Gandhiji's ideal of one, one world, a world of peace. Because the more independent, interdependent people become, the more interconnected people become, the more peace oriented they become. So, therefore, my prediction is that unlike the 19th century and the 20th century, this century and the century to come is not going to, you know, is not going to see huge world wars because the objective condition in the internet age just does not support such, you know, huge violent conflagrations. So, Gandhiji's dream of a world of peace is being promoted by the internet. So, there are many other ways in which I have tried to show that the internet is in some way, um, you know, uh, a promoter of the basic values of the spinning wheel, the charkha and khadi. <laughs> you know, there are, uh, there are many books on Mahatma Gandhi. Uh, there are every year, both Indians and foreigners keep writing books on Gandhi. Now, to me, he fascinated because I found that, uh, you know, Gandhi, you know, if you look at him, his appearance conveys a message that he was a, a total ascetic. He did not really belong to this world. Hmm? Uh, he spun his own cloth and therefore he is not relevant to today's age, which is completely uh, you know, a, a product of modern technology, uh, you know, widening prosperity, so much of material goods and services that are becoming accessible to more and more people. So in this new world, is there a place for a, a person who wore just a khadi dhoti and uh, you know who lived uh, an amazingly simple life but you begin to see that he really represented wealth of a very different kind hmm? not material wealth because material wealth is a is a very uh, limited understanding of what wealth is true wealth is the wealth of culture the wealth of spirit, the wealth of heart, and that is what Gandhiji represents, the wealth of moral values, without which, you know, mankind cannot survive. And which is why, you know, he continues to inspire, you know, all the thought leaders and action leaders of the modern age, be it Nelson Mandela, or Barack Obama, or Aung San Suu Kyi in the political field, or for that matter even Steve Jobs. If you have read you know, the latest biography of Steve Jobs by Walter Isaacson, it will show how Steve Jobs was, you know, drew uh, inspiration from Gandhi. Hmm? 
you know he in fact he was fascinated by this uh, this thought of gandhi where he says be the change that you want to see in the world what a powerful simple line but a very profound line a very powerful line be the change that you want to see in the world hmm? that is true revolution hmm? so i have tried to show how many pioneers of the internet age were really they were great admirers of gandhi they uh, sought inspiration from gandhi and above all an, an entire chapter here is devoted to the relationship and conversation between mahatma gandhi and einstein you know two great minds of the last century one was the greatest century, greatest scientist of all time and another an apostle of peace and non violence why did einstein get so inspired by gandhi so that is a uh, a very uh, i would say uh, an important section of my book you know i would say that uh, uh, you know gandhi's views on science and technology are little known and in fact they are uh, they are uh, so poorly known that people have a lot of misconceptions hmm? that he was against science against technology so uh, my reading of gandhi has highlighted uh, i would you know gandhian scholars probably know this but lay public certainly doesn't know his uh, his uh, contemporary thoughts on science and technology this is one part but uh, the correlation between the philosophy of the spinning wheel and the potential of the internet in all humility i would claim that this is something original there is no other book that has brought about this correlation i was uh, i was very happy in the course of writing this book to meet some really uh, you know visionaries in the field of technology for example sir herald croto you know he's a nobel laureate huh? he got he got the nobel nobel prize for his discoveries that led to the progress of nanotechnology and sir herald croto you know he says that gandhi is is uh, you know his ideas are in conformity with where technology is leading because both are complementary to each other similarly another great mind that uh, i had uh, an interview with is ray kurzweil ray kurzweil is the world's leading futurist of technology you know one of his best selling books it's called singularity is near when technology will transcend biology you know he he proposes a very uh, revolutionary hypothesis that the the rate at which the power of technology information technology is growing he says that man's biological intelligence hmm, will be exceeded by non biological intelligence that is the machine intelligence a billion times in the in the next 2 to 3 decades and that is going to bring about a revolutionary transformations in the way the world is ordered today so raker as well he you know for him mahatma gandhi was and continues to be a hero he says that mahatma gandhi was he says i have quoted him that he is a prophet of the communication revolution this is what raker as well says so uh, at another level i have tried in this book to show you know since today is is an it driven society young people they're very talented you know they are uh, they're very uh, ambitious hmm? they want to they want to do something really uh, you know new in life hmm? and they also want they are highly patriotic so they want to see a better world hmm? 
So young minds in the technology field, and there are thousands of them in Bangalore. So young minds, for them, I think that this will be a, a real discovery to know the connection between technology and Mahatma Gandhi. There are many misunderstood uh, aspects of Mahatma Gandhi's life. Uh, one of them is, you know, his his uh, his experiments in Brahmacharya. Hmm? Uh, there is so much misunderstanding about what he really did, what was his approach to sex, hmm? and the more I research this subject, the more I found that you know it is something. Uh, something very, very profound, hmm? because he was one of his one of his experiments with truth was in the area of human sexuality. Hmm? How sexuality can be divinized to promote non-violence. Hmm? So one may agree, not agree with some aspects of uh, what he did or what he thought, but it is impossible. To disagree that uh, he was a very original thinker. Hmm? Now there are other aspects of uh, Gandhiji that I have probed. How he was a pioneer of green movement in the world. You know today green movement, sustainable development, these are the buzz buzzwords. But you know many decades ago, Gandhi, he, you know he very strongly championed a model of development that is in harmony with nature. In fact, he's saying that Mother Nature has enough to satisfy everyone's need, but not everyone's greed. You know, this is a manifesto for the green movement around the world. Hmm? So a chapter in my book is devoted to showing how he was a pioneer of the concept of sustainable development, green movement. You know his his care for the non-human species in on this planet. He says that we are trustees of the other species. You know we are not the only one that uh, nature has created. God has created. If God has given us some powers, it has given us those powers to protect nature. Hmm? We cannot be exploiters. We cannot be colonizers of nature. We should be trustees of nature. Hmm? This again is a is a very profound concept. It says that you know what is the difference between Britain colonizing India and all of us colonizing the non-human <laughs> life? It is colonialism. Hmm? So if we are against one type of colonialism, we should also be against this kind of colonialism, which today our economic growth, which is distance from nature, is leading to. The other important aspect of my book is, you know, how he how he thinks that uh, women, by nature, are more attuned to promoting non-violence. So he says that until now, you know, evolution of life, according to Darwin, has been governed by the law of survival of the fittest, survival of the strongest. But in human life. It is survival of the kindest, not survival of the fittest, but survival of the kindest. Therefore, kindness, compassion, cooperation, hmm? feeling for others' suffering. You know his his famous uh, the famous uh, devotional song, which was his favorite, Vaishnava Janato Tene Kahiye Je Pid Parai Jane Re. Those are the true religious people who feel the suffering, the pain of others. So compassion, kindness, how, so how the entire world, our politics, our economic system, our social life can, can have more and more of kindness and compassion in it. And hence, you know, his strong, the strong case he made for, of course, the nuclear age was still in its infancy. But he was witness to what happened in Hiroshima and Nagasaki. So, if we want to build a peaceful world, we must eliminate all weapons of mass destruction, nuclear weapons and other weapons of mass destruction. And this is where 
you see I find a very interesting correlation with the internet I don't know how many of how many people know that there is a worldwide movement to nominate the internet for the Nobel Peace Prize hmm? and the lead in this is taken by this famous technology magazine called Wired hmm? the Wired magazine is carrying out a campaign to get the Nobel Peace Prize for the internet because they say that Nobel the internet is a weapon of mass construction as against weapons of mass destruction this is a weapon of mass construction because it is bringing people together it is creating mutual understanding on a global scale hmm? so how the internet's potential to promote peace and Gandhi's ideal of world peace they are again you know they resonate with each other so these are the various aspects that I have probed in my book and uh, I, I do hope that uh, uh, you know generates a certain debate let me tell you let me take this opportunity to tell you that I've just come back from two weeks in China and at several places at seven different places I gave talks on my book including you know uh, institutions like the China Executive Leadership Academy in Shanghai which is a party school this is a school of the Communist Party and uniformly the response to Mahatma Gandhi's thoughts was positive and one of them said my host said that it would have been unthinkable a few decades ago for uh, the Communist Party school to have a, a talk on Mahatma Gandhi because you know in in China many people considered Mahatma Gandhi's thoughts and Mao Zedong thoughts to be opposite to each other hmm? so there was no place for Gandhi but now China is opening up and I was very uh, pleasantly surprised at uh, the openness with which people discussed Gandhi in Beijing, in Shanghai, in Shenzhen. So I am Mahatma Gandhi is a world is a world citizen. He doesn't belong only to India, and therefore you see the United Nations a few years ago has declared his birth birthday birth anniversary October two as day of non-violence to be observed world over so he's today a world citizen I think he's the greatest Indian born in modern times and we should be proud of the fact that uh, he was born here but there is a responsibility to understand him and also to implement those thoughts in our economic policies, in our economic system, in our business practices, most certainly in politics, because in politics, the kind of politics we have in our country today, I mean, it is not uh, what what Gandhiji would have approved at all. You know, he was again and again emphasizing the politics of consensus, politics of cooperation, hmm? politics of tolerance, hmm? respect for each other's views and we are going in a different direction this is not the example that can that can bring India uh, prestige in the world community so we have a lot to learn ourselves so instead of just paying ritualistic tribute to Gandhi it's high time we started understanding him and and try to follow the footsteps